And I've been, I've been really excited about this day for a long time. I didn't even really sleep last night. I was just kind of up, and I actually had a dream about this a week ago. <laughs> like, it was just – because this, to me, in all honesty, is one of the coolest things that's happened in, in quite some time. And I just want to uh, say we've got Tyler Nielsen, Mr. Michael Schwartz, in the studio with us this morning. Good morning, <laughs> gentlemen. Thank you for having us, Bateman. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. A- absolutely. It's our pleasure. And I also uh, feel real – I feel the pressure now of uh, – Autumn? Um, uh, well, no, I just feel the pressure of performing because I'm I'm, I'm nervous oh. that uh, that Bateman was having dreams about us. Like, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm just like I'm honored that he's yeah. having dreams. I'm about just us. like we went to high school together, dude. We're, yeah. uh, what, what's your problem? He's like, oh, no. it's, he was texting me this morning at like 5 a.m. He's like, I'm kind of oh, yeah. coming a little That's nervous. Justin. I'm That's like, Justin. That's Justin, though. Yeah, he like there. like checkpoints. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Trust me, yeah. I know. Well, was it your headphones too loud? Oh, it was the mic is weird. Oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry. As long as it sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great. You're you're fine on this lot side, so. Well, yeah, so, you know, we got you guys in here, and I just, um, a little background on Tyler. Tyler, from the Manio High School, he is a, a local resident here at the Outer Banks Group in Collington. And uh, now, Michael, tell me a little bit about, about you. Tell me about you. Where are you from? I'm from Sonoma, California. Okay. Oh, West Coast boy. Mm-hmm. West Coast boy. Met up with Tyler 15 years ago, 14, 15 yep. years ago. Mike, uh, was- Mike wants to be from I do. Yeah. We're adopting. <laughs> we're okay. fully. Ad- part of me is like, look, we're not going to talk about Sonoma. Mike loves the Outer Banks. He comes down here with me, like when we're shooting stuff. He like, basically dates every girl here. It's just, <laughs> he loves the Outer Banks. There's something special about this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, every time he comes, I was like, man, another one. Mike's, getting, Mike's just doing his thing. So y'all, y'all linked up about what you said about 15, 14, 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, okay, so that puts years. us back in what 2003, 2004, somewhere in there, maybe 2005. I think that's bad math. I think that's Manual High School math. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's, actually two, it's actually technically 2004. Five. Okay, 2005. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it this morning. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Vrabelik. Thank you, Mr. Vrabelik. Appreciate you, Mr. Vrabelik. So you know, and I, I just want to say, you know, Tyler and I went to school together. Okay, and the one thing that I was telling, I've told Autumn this just the other day, and I've talked about it with a few people um, that were asking about you being here this morning. And the one thing, Tyler, that I remember about you from high school was where's this going? Yeah, I'm, now I'm tuned in. I'm, le- yeah. I'm leaning into this. <laughs> you were friends with everybody. Oh, all right, that's fine. Yes, you yes. Were, no, Liz, I'm serious. Yeah, there was Tyler was not part of I a. Remember click. you saying that? Yeah, it was the click he, nomad. He yeah. exactly. He I was friends with everybody. He had a. I mean, you know, where there was your, you know, redneck row. You know, mm-hmm. there was, you know, there was all your different cliques at uh, at the school. But you were friends with everyone. Yeah, there wasn't a single person that you you know can say anything bad about you in my opinion i mean you were always i'm sure there's really, at least one it's actually funny because you know? there was one there was one girl there was, <laughs> I was so, always yeah. a girl right there was a, a girl on facebook somebody was like you got to read this post and i read it and she was like this guy was mean to me at collington pool when i was 11 and i hope he fails and i see a sort of tyler and tyler was so messy he calls me up he's like honestly i don't know if i can be a director because People are going to talk about how I was mean to them at Collington Pool when I was little. <laughs> so I wrote her a letter. I was like, "Hey, I'm really sorry. I was really, I'm really sorry. Can you forgive that? Can you forgive that 11 year old young her man?" A I did. I wrote yeah. her a whole letter. I was like, "I'm really sorry. I made a mistake. I was mean to you when I was 11." And and on her on her Facebook post, she wrote, "His words echo through my head. They haunt me. They haunt me. Every day I wake up and they haunt me." Oh my me. god! And then she wrote back, and I felt terrible I, for like a week. Yeah. I was like, I beat myself up. I was like, I was spinning, and she wrote back, and she was like. Oh yeah, I don't. Know, honestly, I hadn't even thought about it since uh, since. I, and then I saw you uh, doing a movie, and I thought about it, and I just posted it on Facebook. And I was like, "You, why the heck did you write my words echo through your head? That's, you made it's me the feel meanest awful. thing ever." It's and an then, exorcist kind of. So, thing. so I just wrote back to her. All good. <laughs> All good. <laughs> All good. And just moved on. Uh, well, I guess you know. In your so, life. other than her, I think that you know, we, I did. I have a lot of friends. It's my community. It's right. This is my family, man. Yeah. Like you know, like I feel like we all grew up together. You know, Bateman. I know you. Yes. I know your brother. Like we're, we. There's roots here in a way that I'm really proud of. I'm proud to be from this place and with these people and to bring this movie home for the. I guess the listeners. We haven't said I've made a movie with Michael called The Peanut Butter Falcon. We brought it home this weekend, our opening weekend. We opened in a thousand theaters, and we brought it here. Uh, you know, the producers and the people that are in charge wanted us. They're like, "You guys, you know, go to, um, you guys got to take it to Seattle and go, or go to Chicago and be there for the opening weekend." And, and Mike and I were both like, "Oh heck no, no possible. We're not doing <laughs> that. 
we're going home. We're going to the outer. That's beautiful. That's, awesome. that's beautiful. Goosebump that's stuff. Awesome. Goosebump yeah. stuff. Oh, no, that's true, dude. Well, and that's, I love it. And that's mm-hmm. the thing. Like every time I watched the movie, I laughed. I cried. You yeah. know, I got go- just watching the trailer gave me goosebumps. The whole mm-hmm. thing. Uh, now, tell me, tell us this. Now, when what was the idea? Like, what gave you this idea? The inspiration for this movie? Please tell. Everybody wants to know. I mean, it's a classic jailbreak adventure story. So yeah, yeah you know those classic jailbreak adventure stories. <laughs> It lives sort of in the world of modern Mark Twain, and it's um, our good friend Zach Gottsagen, who is the star of the movie, uh, has Down syndrome, and he wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> and we were hanging out with him in Los Angeles, and we were having a real frank conversation, like, there's not a lot of roles written for people with disabilities. Right. And he didn't skip a beat. He just said, cool, you guys are writers and directors. Why don't you write and direct a movie? I'll star in it. <laughs> and we were like, duh, let's do it. Okay. Game on. Yeah, so we thought it was going to take us half a year you know like Mm -hmm. it's a big deal make a movie it's now five years later and we also thought we were going to make it for no money no (laughs) nothing and we've got Shia LaBeouf and Dakota Johnson and a couple of three Oscar nominees yeah Yeah. holding it down so it's no kidding oh yeah I mean we got Bruce Dern Mm -hmm. Thomas Hayden Church John Hawks that's three right there that's three right there yep Let's not do anymore. That's all yep. we got. Yeah. <laughs> well, our producers also won an Oscar with Little Miss Sunshine. Mm-hmm. They're nominated. Such They're a nom- great movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were nominated. In, uh, Kevin Tenner, Kevin- editor, was nominated. For Sideways. Yeah. Uh, as an editor, yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll stop with the name drop. <laughs> Nobody cares. Game People are like, shut up. I, <laughs> I think that they, um, um, we need to take them over across our sister station real quick because they are going live with them as well. Okay, they so keep this on will coming be a back and they keep on continued. looking at me. This yes. was a tease, guys. Go uh, Google the trailer, watch it, and when and when we come back, you'll know more about, about the movie. It. Yeah, there you go. for your listeners out there, we only agreed to come on 94.5. I love Bateman, <laughs> and then we actually just had to give other people a shot. So we're going to go do their stuff. We're coming back here. This is I appreciate. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you. I don't want your nightmares to come true. <laughs> <laughs> just like, and then they left, and I was like, oh, and then they were taunting him. Coming back, we're going to do some more time here with you guys, and thank you for having us. Excellent. Thank you. All right, and we're back. We're back. They came back. They did. They, they did. Stay. We had to share them with the uh, the two <laughs> clowns down the hall, but they came back to see us. Yes, I'm talking about Michael Schwartz and the uh, local boy straight out of Collington. Out of straight Rank. out of Collington. Crazy. <laughs> 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 alert. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler Nielsen got him back in the studio with us. And, and, of course, to kind of recap what we talked about a little bit earlier, they are the directors of the new blockbuster smash hit, <laughs> Peanut Butter Falcon. Now, Peanut Butter Falcon, now like, give us um, – we talked about, you know, a little earlier about the, the – the, 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 How it how all started. Yeah, how it all started. But uh-huh. tell us right now, give us the storyline, the plot. What is the plot of this movie? What's the the – the way it's going to all go down without, you know, throwing it all. Oh, yeah. thank God he stopped. You're about to throw it all away. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to give you the hour and a half version, but I'll keep yeah. it down to yeah. the one minute. Yeah, cut it it's down. It's a 93-minute yeah. movie, so here's 45. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's an adventure story Okay. with a dude with Down syndrome. In a world. <laughs> he breaks out of a retirement home. He breaks out of a Brit Haven retirement home. Brit Haven. Okay. Brit Haven. And, he, Brit and he's Haven on, a, on a quest to find <laughs> his favorite professional wrestler. Saltwater Redneck. Saltwater Redneck. And he ends up meeting up with a crab fisherman on the run. Okay. Broken some laws. And uh, they build a raft. They drink some whiskey. They dance around bonfires. And uh, this this worker from the retirement home, played by Dakota Johnson, chases him down and ends up joining up. Okay. All right. And then now they, they continue their quest. And that's just kind of the adventure is the quest to find the Saltwater Redneck yeah. and to be part of this wrestling camp. There's a no character arc, arc within that plot, too. You know, it's a good character arc for, uh, for the cast. Sorry, I'm just going to writer mode. I'm like, well, the character arc, is, yeah. <laughs> they feel things. Yeah. Emotionally. Emotion, they, they laugh. Yeah. They cry. Spirituality, Dude. ups and downs. Yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. I could feel it when I watched the movie. It was just. Yeah, was I think one of my favorite things. parts was. I can't tell it. I can't tell it. I just nailed. I just wanted. You just ran right, right over him. <laughs> That's all, all right. Time. I'm used to it. I mean, we were well. You were kind of there, and I didn't I do know love what sports. you wanted me to cover up for you. So we were talking about when they built the built the raft. Just yeah. got done, and he's sitting there, and he said, "I will give you all my birthday wishes." I think I bawled. Like I just literally. It was looks just like, like you're tearing up right now. I know, because it was like one of those moments in the movie. I was just like, "That is the sweetest thing I think anyone could say." It was. It was just cute to me. I don't know why. So, yeah, I, yeah, I gave that part away in the movie. And they're kind of going know. like this and touching each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and, one of my favorite parts, no. too. It was, uh, you know, Mike and I are co-directors, co-writers. That was actually a day. 
the interesting day. There wasn't enough room for me on the raft. <laughs> Real truth. And uh, Bernthal was coming in town, so I had to go. I was talking with Bernthal about character stuff and what hat he was going to, you know, what the Outer Banks hat he wears and stuff. And and I remember watching the monitor on that scene, and Mike was on the raft. And he was directing. Yeah. And that came really naturally. We didn't write that yeah. scene. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And uh, it's one of those. I think that's why I felt. I think I felt that too. Like it was just like there. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah, it was a, it's a sweet. <laughs> we got a lot of really funny and really sweet, yes. heartfelt parts to this film, and also really hilarious. Like a, <laughs> a, a compliment we get, you know, we we won South by Southwest this year, and it was a really cool thing. Like people were like, I didn't know I could cry that hard uh-huh. and laugh that hard, yeah, and then cry that hard and then laugh that hard and then cry that hard and laugh that hard all in one film, and that makes me really proud as a writer to be like, man, we did that. We. We take you on an emotional roller coaster ride through the deltas oh, no, and right. tributaries of the Outer Banks of North Carolina <laughs> tonight, eight o'clock in Mania. <laughs> and nine something at other places. Other places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's only one. So yeah. no, it's, it's funny, buddy. We we're playing kill. We're playing Kill Devil Hills uh, movie RC ten and, yeah. and Mania, but Buddy had the film first. And he and he want, he I think he wanted to be the only guy with it. That was funny because he, <laughs> he called me like a week. I was like, "Sir, they're playing to kill the hills too." And I was like, "Yeah, man, it's what happens. It's a it's a movie." And he's movie. like, "He's like, it's not about me, right?" And I was like, "No, it's not." And he's like, "I know. I just really wanted it to be. I wanted to be here in Manny. I love this movie. He's support man. We went down there and played this movie last year for him in his movie theater. I never met the man. I just heard about him and I called him. I was like, "Hey, can I come play this movie for a bunch of my friends?" And he was like damn right, you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. and I showed up and he was he was just barefoot drinking a Long Island Ice Tears it was like one of those moments where I was like this is the guy that runs the movie theater <laughs> I always wondered who's behind who's behind the curtain here you should have met his daddy oh yeah his daddy was a trip that's what yeah he's what it's, uh, yeah he was telling <laughs> he me he had story. two Long Island yeah in his he was telling me stories but yeah it was that guy supported you know this again you know characters like that like you know it's funny because just this film is there's characters like that Mm -hmm. in every aspect of this film you know like there's there is a you know a buddy creep there's a there's like that kind of guy in this movie and i think you know people are seeing it in like you know new york and la and dc and people are just going like wait people like this really exist (laughs) and then the people in the south are going yeah like this is how it is. This is us. This is yeah. us. yeah, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. Because I think people in the north are being like truly like people that are don't understand this sort of lifestyle are going like, oh, it's really beautiful. I think it's really common for places like the Outer Banks and places like the South to be to be done in a way that's almost disrespectful and uh, what's the word? The bad guy. Yeah, yeah. like the South is stupid yeah, or everyone like, in the South is a podunk and dummy yeah. and ignorant. Yeah. And and a, and a compliment we're getting a lot of is is oh I didn't never seen the South painted like that with in in broad strokes that like people here are beautiful and connected to a deep spirituality mm-hmm. and and in some kind of cheesy way redneck hippie <laughs> you know like there's some like it, it's amazing like you think about like you know like you're back in Wanchies and, and like it, yeah it can feel red it can feel red for sure but there's these guys who are like of the earth and they're talking about earth stuff and like moon you know like the moon cycles and the tides we're sitting here talking about the tides is that where winky comes into play yeah well no winky's 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 uh uh, probably even a deeper like winky's the the yoda of this community but 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 yeah like it is there's a redneck hippiness to the outer Uh banks which i really love and i think you know somebody called in la called me a redneck hippie and i was like but damn right, I'm proud to be yeah, one. Yeah, I'm proud to be yeah. one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's perfect. When we were out here riding and shooting that proof of concept, I remember sitting in Winky's mud ditch. And the water was, the mud was up to his chin. He was just sitting there telling stories for an hour. The sun was going down. It was so beautiful. I'd never experienced anything like it where I grew up. And I was like, this is so amazing. This is so beautiful. Is there going to be gators? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what, what's going to happen here? <laughs> It's funny because Mike's went to that story. I was like, don't tell the story that you told in the mud ditch. <laughs> <laughs> that was a private conversation, Mike. Like, Can't tell that story. <laughs> Winky's got good stories. Winky's got good stories.
I'm you know, sure I, I, I kind of want to swing the mic around to, around to dad real yeah. quick. Yeah, so my dad's in the, in the studio. Everyone, this is Rick Nelson and my dad. He Hello. <laughs> Tyler's dad. All right. So he joined dad. us. We woke him up. At five. We were like, all right, you're waking up. You're driving us around today. So he's been driving us around. <laughs> Very nice. Dad, good morning. Good morning. Get, get, get close to that thing now. There good morning. you go. There you go. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Now, you know, I'm sure, you know, growing up with Tyler, and I remember, like I said, from high school, I remember Tyler, and it was an adventure. I mean, you know, he was a great guy all the way around. If, you know, senior superlative. I don't remember what they were for him, but I'm sure best all around and probably most well liked was, you know. That one girl in Colling- the Collington Pool one. wasn't too happy. But <laughs> one. Yeah. It's always one. But, uh, you know, I, I just want to hear from a, from Dad's point of view, you know, when he took off and said, Dad, I'm heading to the West Coast. It broke know. my heart. Broke Literally, heart. it broke. I mean, it's like, you know, you want your kids to have dreams. Not those dreams. You know, it's right. like, you know, it's like, you want... You, know, you don't want him to dream that big. Right. You can't just exactly. please, Tyler, don't dream right. that big. Are you sure you just don't want to be a contractor here on the Outer Banks or, you know. Like- when I was leaving, he told me, he was like, listen, don't do that. You want to, you're going to tear out cabinets with me this winter. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, at the last night we were at the theater and I stood up and I said, you know, thank you. I was talking to the audience for being the the village that raised my son mm-hmm. because the Outer Banks raised him more yeah. than I did yeah. in reality. <laughs> so, so, it gives new meaning to the, the village. takes a village. Really takes, does. It does. It takes a village to raise Tyler Nelson. <laughs> 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 so, you know, he set off. He got out there, and he calls you, and he's like, Dad, I'm out here, and I'm, I'm, I'm making some moves. You know, what's going through your mind? Well, I think he was, I think I knew he was lying to me. You know what I mean? I, mean, I knew he was, because it was, a, you know, I mean, I didn't know. That, like, he's living in this car. I didn't, you know, know any yeah. of this stuff. I mean, it's not till years later that I find out, you know, what happened to him with the girl at the pool in Collington. You right. Know? So, <laughs> I know, he was that way to me, too, you know. I mean, <laughs> but now, that, now, you know, seeing from, you know, way back when, to where he is today, you know, you can only be, you, you can only be, but you know, you're, I know you're super proud. You oh, know? it's incredible. I Did mean, you when cry? We moved here. <laughs> I mean, I moved Tyler here, I guess it was in 87, 86 or 87. You know, I mean, and a, a funny thing, it was like Winky Silver was like one of the bulkhead contractors on Pirate's Cove. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, Pirate's Cove was the project that brought me to the Outer Banks. So, I mean, I mean, it's just, All I mean, things. I feel local here. I mean, I've right. been here since 86. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So was Tyler. So, I mean, literally, this this is our town. Yeah. I'm really proud of, you know, what they've done. They just, you know, I mean, I, when I first, I still I still go back and see um, Moped Diaries every two or three days. <laughs> right. You know, just because it's like, you know, it was a connection. Because you're proud of him. him. That's yeah. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean. Just, yeah. I mean, I. He's not you know, lying to you. He actually made some movies. I, <laughs> he made it happen. <laughs> he did. He did. You know, I mean, and, and I'm just, you know, I'm still in awe. Yeah. Of the fact that he's done that. It's pretty cool. You know, and it's like, and it's, I mean, he is so accepted here in the Outer Banks. I just, I'm just, I'm proud of him. Really well, I can I can say from my point of view, from when I was in high school, you know, your son was a definitely, you know, despite what the girl from Collington when you were, when she was eleven <laughs> says, you know, I I always saw him, a smile on his face, happy to see you. What's up? Good to see you today. What's going on? You know, where's a party at this weekend? <laughs> and just always having a good time in there. I feel like and I'm, I'm trying to really go back in time right now. I went to a soccer game one time, and there was a group of you know, there was a big group of guys, and mm-hmm. you were there. And you were, I don't know if we were losing. I don't remember what the situation was, but you were being a hype man. Oh, I was a I was full on. I support yes, people. You, I support people out here. Yeah. You were a hype man. Like, you know, you were always getting everybody energized. Directing. Up. A director. Dude, I'm there telling you, you it's been that way for yeah. a long time. Now, yeah. you know, that's got to be a compliment to dad because, I mean, that's good. that goes back to good roots. It's good parenting. No, wow. it's not really his fault. No. It's not it's, his fault. No, it's more, my, it's more the community. No, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean. He can have it. Let's go back to stock. talking let's about just, the movie, yeah, The Peanut right. Butter Falcon. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, and I think, you know, I think that as a, I definitely, you know, this, yeah, we'll go back to the movie. Um, no, like, as a hype man, like, you know, you take that and you, that became, I just became a director, you know, and I met a, a buddy who we do it, we're sort of like, you know, I'm looking at, I'm sitting here looking at on, on the, your desk, Bateman, of you and your brother, 
as uh, Little League coaches, right? T-ball, yeah. T-ball. My son. It's my little boy right yeah. there. The very end. That's my guy. So look at you guys. Are You guys run it. You know, yep. that's you. Like, Mike and I do the same thing. We're like the parents of the film. Like, Mike will be, you know, off connecting with Dakota, and she's, like, talking. They're talking about her character and what she's going through. And Shy and I are going off the rope swing naked. You know, like, like uh, just yeah, just yeah. being wild, and you know, like, and and we kind of run run our set like sort of summer group therapy family style, and with two dads. It's awesome. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, and just the way it all kind of comes together like that. So, um, yeah, dad, going. I had the question in my head, and I lost. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's okay. Oh, I thing about um. Oh. <laughs> So while you were, you know, you were going back and answering that phone call in the yeah, studio next yeah. door, I was talking to Mike here and I was telling him, I said, you know, when I was thinking about all of this and trying to get myself mentally prepared for having you guys in here and to give this interview its due justice and yeah. everything and to help promote the film as best we can. I was thinking about just the history of Manio High School yeah. and just the history of like, you know, people, how many people have passed through the doors of Manio High School, you know, 70, 80 at least. <laughs> well, of those 70, 80 people that passed through Manio High School. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that's 40. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, but in, just in kidding, all, just in, kidding. I'm in, a Manio in, guy. In all, in let's, all seriousness, though. <laughs> I just want to, let's just poo-poo on first life for a little while. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Manio, Manio kids had, had to go to work. They couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford it. Yeah, but, yeah. I think about everybody that went through the doors of Manio High School, and I mean, I think about the ones, you know, from way back, you know, when Manio High School first came to existence in the 50s. Gosh, well, yeah, I think it was before that, but anyway, just way back, way, way back to to the present day, and, you know, there's been a good handful of folks that have actually gotten out of here and gone and done something, yeah. you know, and, but a majority of us, like myself, I mean, I got out of here, I was like, well, I couldn't wait to get out of here when I graduated, yeah. when the Army, you know, I came home, but we came home. Yeah. And kind of started settling around. I mean, we've all done our own cool things, but I was telling Michael when, when you were next door taking that phone call, I said, you know, I think about people that have gone out and really done something that you could say, man, that was super cool. And mm-hmm. I, I got I to gotta put you on the top of that totem pole. Thank you. I, I, I'm serious. Like, I think about, you know, we got some people, you know, got a guy playing in the CFL right now that went to Manio High School. Oh, no way. Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Davis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, no, he's that's playing, really rad. He's playing in the CFL right now. Yeah. He's actually got a big event going on over at Manio High School on uh, – on Saturday, yeah, for uh, back to school stuff. That's you great, know? man. So, um, you know, but I think about that, and I think about some other people that have gone out and done some different things, and it's like, you know what? Like this to me is the absolute coolest thing. Thank you in the world. And that's why I was so nervous about the day because I was yeah. like, I got to make sure that I give you guys your due justice with everything, and make sure that everything is done just right. Well, you know, it's so funny you say that because the truth is, in, in its own poetic, beautiful way, I came home too, and here yeah. I am. Yeah. And so, like, I think that people are drawn to this place for reasons that are above and beyond us and for a, for beautiful reasons but you know it, even me leaving to go do something else I still write about the Outer Banks you know like it, it, I, I think about you know like my teachers I think about um, Mr. Bassnight I think about Steve Bassnight I think about he's a he's the uh, he's now the uh, in Hyde County what is yeah. it Chance- superintendent chancellor of Thing. Yeah. He's, he's the chancellor. He's the king of books. He comes to like, <laughs> yeah, my church. Yeah. But, you know, I think about those guys and, like, you know, the, you know, not to say, he, you know, he didn't leave. He stayed and created a life here and it was an influence on me. And, and I think that, you know, I didn't, I left to go make something, but my influence was really here. Don't you know, forget this, about Artie Tillett now. Oh, dude, 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 don't you dare forget about one man party Artie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, like, you know, those guys, like, I almost am, gr- I'm really grateful that they're still here. You know, like, I'm, I'm like, this community holds together so well. You know, I'm just, I'm so proud to be a part of it. And, and I'm really proud to come back, too. You know, I didn't, there's nothing, you know, you can leave. That nothing will re- replace this community of people. This is the greatest, in my opinion, is the greatest place on earth. I love it. You know, every time I'm like, I'm going to take a vacation, it's like, where are you going? Are you going to Mexico? It's an hour south. You're going to go like, to Bali. I'm like, I'm going home to Wanchi's, to the Outer Banks. I'm going to spend <laughs> spend my my September in Wanchi's with these people. I, I love this community. So like, there's almost no reason to leave.
unless you can yeah. make a movie. You know, <laughs> That's true. We'll go protect our country. You know? <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> well, let me ask you this now. You guys have got, you know, Peanut Butter Falcon. It's in theaters today. It's been in some At select Pioneer theaters. theaters. It's at the Pioneer Theater. It's going to be in the Pioneer, I believe, for the next two weeks. Yeah, okay. two weeks. And then it's over here at RC Theaters in Kill Devil Hills. For at least a week. For at least a week. Um, do you have any, uh, you want to share any projects coming up that y'all are considering, you know? That's a great question. That's a great question. And I see that ring on your finger, that wedding ring, and I'm going to answer it just like this. I love this woman. I love this movie. Like, I couldn't tell you. I'm not looking past it. I'm staring right into this movie's eyes. I made a vow, a commitment to this movie. I have nothing else on my plate in the future. This is it for me. So, uh, you know, like, in the future, will I make more stuff? Yes, Mike and I will make more stuff. But at this exact moment, mm -hmm. all I want to do is, like, this weekend is five years of my life working on the project my entire life and my entire professional, I say this finger quotes, career of living in a truck in L.A. and going out <laughs> there, comes down to do people come see it this weekend? Because, you know, it's 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 a numbers game. It's show business. For, yeah. it's, it's, there's a big, the majority of that is just the business. So if we're out in a thousand, a thousand uh, theaters, if you, if people out there, like, post on your Facebook pages, post about it on Instagram, come see the film, give us opening weekend numbers, like, come see the Outer Banks in, in, in a, a really unique light because that will then guarantee that it, it will stay in the Kill Devil Hills Theater longer than a week. That the, the world will get to see the Outer Banks in the way I think the Outer Banks should and, and needs to be portrayed. Yeah. It's a great movie. What, it's what, so what, good. Yeah, what's, what's really, you know, it, it gives, I mean, I've had goosebumps yeah, all you guys have been here. I thought you were cold. Dude. <laughs> I thought you were just cold. But it, it was really cool to me when it's like I was watching, just flipping through the channels the other day, and I yeah. stopped. I don't remember what channel it was on right now, but a trailer for Peanut Butter yeah. came on, and I was just like, dude, that, I'm yeah. getting goosebumps right yeah. now. It's just like, I was like, that is awesome. I mean, we had to convince, you know, it's a, it's a, a, everyone, a lot of people always say, like, what's the hardest part of making this movie? What's the hardest part of making a movie? And I'll tell you, like, writing a movie isn't, isn't that hard. Like, Mike and I work really well together. Like, it wasn't hard to write the movie. It took us, you know, six months. Um, shooting the movie wasn't that hard. Editing the movie was tough, but it wasn't that hard. The real thing was getting people to give you millions of dollars to make art. Yeah. So to, to go into a room in L.A. with these, these big wigs and sit down and be like, hey, so I want to make art about a small island off the coast of North Carolina and a guy that has Down syndrome... And they were like, okay, cool. Well, you know, like, is it's the South. So, like, you know, rednecks and, and you know, like, and we're going to, you know, it's, it's like what we'd expect the South to be. And I was like, no, we're doing it poetic. We're going to do it justice. You know, that is, that was one of the biggest hurdles I've ever had to, to, to get across. And thank God we got the right guys. You know, we got these really rad dudes to, to finance our film, you know, it, because, you know, they, they believed in the yeah. project. But, like, that was the hardest thing. Like, convincing the world to put a... You know how much money it costs to put a commercial on TV? I don't. I know I know it's super expensive, though. Like, we had to convince people to pay for that. Like, posters. Like, all this stuff, it costs money. It's a business. Wow. And they, But the truth is, like, the business is getting the message, like, out to the world. Hoping that the world digests this message and also maybe pays 11 bucks to do it. So the best thing people can do for you coming home, you know, premiering your movie here and stuff like that is to get on their social media and just blow it up tonight and this weekend, right? Pack the theater. Yeah. yeah and I even mean, if they've got friends in Nashville or Virginia yep. Beach or New York City or Madison, Wisconsin, like it's playing everywhere. So if you've got friends, family anywhere else, just tell them to go it. too. All right. Yeah, like we, I don't even think it's, 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 I think this weekend's the first time. Like, I don't think people really realize that we've had a movie that's playing everywhere. Like, I think people are like, oh, you made a, a little oh, movie and you're cool. playing it's a mania. Yeah. yeah, like, oh, great. You're going to no. be at your hometown theater. Like, even even my mom was like, oh, cool. Like, that's really cool that Buddy's going to let you let you go to mania. And I was like, we're in a thousand theaters. Yeah. Like, there's a thousand cities playing New our Mexico. movie. Yeah, like, yeah. Anchorage, Alaska. Like, it's in Canada. Like, it's going to open in London on the 18th of October. Like, there's so much happening with that's this awesome. movie. If, if people like, and that's, it, that's why I think we're here in this, to, you know, we came home with it, is I do feel like, for me as a human being, my roots are here. This right. is where I feel the strongest. This is where I like, you know, strong, you know, winds, hurricane winds come at me. And if I'm, I'm this, these are my roots. So I came here, home, to show the movie to my family, to my friends and family in this community hoping that people will come out and support and yeah. post on Facebook. It's as cheesy as it sounds. Like, will you post on Facebook? The truth is, 
if you're listening, them Insta stories. I need you to po- I need you to post on Facebook. Yeah. Go on IMDb. Yeah, rated on IMDb. Rotten Tomatoes. Like all that stuff yeah. matters. Like talk about it. Talk yeah. about it to your friends. Like this this community is is more powerful than I think even we realize. And it, and 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 even just me being from this community, I'm like I'm powerful. I'm a powerful person. I'm I'm a powerful person who went into the world and made art and is making a difference. And I'm from this community. That means this whole community supports and creates people like that and please like we have reach beyond just here like it is it does like the ripple effect of like as small as it may seem the ripple effect of getting on facebook and being like i'm really proud of this movie it represents i went and saw it in the theaters and it really represents this world in a way i want to be seen you know we talk about the outer banks from a very spiritual perspective like if you come watch the film there's a there's a deep uh, spiritual undertones that i think people will really pick up on in a nice way yeah but that ripple effect of telling people about about it will be the best thing for us to get the message out. I just went into prophetic mode there. That was. Yeah. I feel like Steve Bass Knight's on on the list. Oh He's like, my god! Yeah, he did a good job. Tyler did a good job. <laughs> yeah, Tyler did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> nice work, Tyler. Slap, nice work, Tyler. slap on the back. Slap All on right. back yeah. <laughs> nice work, bud. Well, pretty, I'm getting pretty work. Pretty work. My 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 text. I'm blowing up. I got a friend of mine, uh, Jr. He went and saw it last night. Awesome movie. Um, Gentleman, he likes to refer to himself as the father of the sons of Skyco. His name's Chase Midget. He said he will be there Chase. with you know Chase. Yeah. He said I will be there with my people. Yeah, you know, and bring all your disciples, Chase. Mm-hmm. John Munley told me to tell you, hey, Jay Mun. Yeah. Um, By the way, Jay Munley, it's funny when we. This is the sort of community we have here. When we were shooting the tra- the trailer for the film, he was messaging me like, "Hey, man, you guys need some food." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "I'm gonna bring you some deer." Some seafood, like that guy supports. He was like, "I got nothing for you. I can't help you out there in Hollywood. But I can bring you meat." Yeah, yeah. yeah like I was like, "This is that's this yeah. community, yeah. man. Like this is a good, we're a, we're a good group of people, you yeah. know." Absolutely. Now I got, I, you know, I got one more question. You for can ask six more, list. man. It's okay. fine. And I, you know, I know you guys want to play music and there stuff. There was a but... rumor. See, I'm a big wrestling fan. Yeah. Okay. WWE. I watch it. You know, and that's yeah. why it kind of is a little bit more personal for me because I remember yeah. Saltwater Redneck is a real person. Mikey you know? Wilson. Mikey is his Wilson. Name. I knew it. Mikey I was Wilson to tell is his that name. The other day. Yeah. And, um, he came to the theater in DC to watch it with his wife. Really? Yeah. I watched him watch the movie. So I've seen the movie a thousand times now. Yes. So Mikey Wilson sitting in the front row in DC with his family. I watched that man watch the movie. And every time, I think we say Saltwater Rim 20, 30 times. I watched it wash over him. It was the coolest experience. Aww. <laughs> so when we were writing the film, we, you know, again, we were just writing for people that we knew that would be in it. And we could get, you know, again, Duncan Silver. We yes. We could get Duncan Silver, you know, John Hawks playing Duncan Silver now, but, you know, that was originally, we were going to get Duncan Silver to play Duncan Silver. And I just didn't know, we wanted to do a wrestling thing, Zach loves wrestling, we're, and I had seen Mikey Wilson wrestle uh, at Manuel High Manuel School. High, fight for, for sight. The, yep, for the, he wrestled the Toad. The for toad, toad, yes, from Raven's yep, Block. Yep, and uh, <laughs> I love you, just call it, yeah, and, uh, and it was one of those things where I was like, oh, we'll just get Mikey to do it, and, you know, I had, like, I'd this is a very random story, and I'll keep it very short, but I went to East Carolina as a pirate, which most Outer Bankers, I think. <laughs> Manio <laughs> University is what I used yeah, to Yeah, exactly. I went to Manio University, uh, and uh, one day I, 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 I had a, one of those nights, and I came very early in the morning. It might have been four in the morning or late at night, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and the saltwater redneck, a.k.a. Mikey Wilson, was sleeping in my bed. I have a photo <laughs> of him just sleeping in my bed next to Brandon Level. <laughs> like I was like, and, and and I just was like, what is happening? This is, and I hadn't seen Brandon in like three years, and I hadn't, hadn't seen Mikey since I like Mikey's older than me, and I'd seen him, I'd known of him. And I was like, hey, like, you're just, you're the saltwater redneck, and he's like, oh yeah, bud. <laughs> and I actually think he just said pretty work and stood up and left the house. Pretty work. He just said pretty work, and uh, and and a, a, a subtle thing that you'll see in the film uh, is there's a giant shrimp trawler called Pretty Work. And That's that is, solid. That is an ode to the Outer Banks because nobody, I say Pretty Work on the, in L.A. all the time and people are like, what did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Catching on now though, Pretty Work is becoming, like Tyler is making it an L.A. thing now. People <laughs> yeah. people come up to us on Pretty Work. And pretty I actually, work. I just looked at the back of the studio. You got a WWE Championship belt. Yes. yes. In yeah. the studio. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, look, this guy right here is a, he was, he's dead now. He actually passed away a year ago or so. Ivan, uh, 
Oh, I can't ever pronounce his yeah, name. Yeah, like he doesn't know the name. He's like, this guy right here is a wrestler, and I just have a picture of him. There's you don't always... care about him. Where's the saltwater redneck? Yeah, exactly. Sal- yeah. I think exactly. one year for Christmas I got him that, and I just take uh, I took the camo duct tape and put it around it because he had to throw a little bit of wanchies in there somehow, and I yeah. felt like the camo duct tape was the only way to really <laughs> make like it work. Camo, and also WWE's been tweeting about the movie. Stephanie McMahon, Triple H. Triple H checks tweeted uh, Zach the other day. And, no yeah. kidding. Yeah, so Zach, awesome. in, Zach in interviews... People were asking, you know, who's your favorite wrestler? And he was like, well, Jake the Snake and, of course, Mick Foley. You know, like, That's what I wanted to ask yeah. you. Rumor has it Mick Foley was in Wanchies. Can you confirm or deny that? I can neither confirm nor, confirm nor deny, but I will give you a wink and a nod and pass the mic back to Mike. <laughs> well, so Triple H got a hold of one of these interviews where Zach said that uh, Mick Foley was his favorite wrestler. Oh. And he tweeted at Zach Gott Sagan, hey, I heard you said that Mick Foley is your favorite wrestler. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing because Mick Foley is great, but I'm kind of upset that I'm not your favorite wrestler. And Zach now, when he's asked in interviews, who's your favorite wrestler? Wait, he, just, no. he just says, no. He's like, Triple H got mad at me. I can't say Mick Foley anymore. Because he did say Triple H for a minute, too. And then and then we <laughs> called him out. We were like, well, you, you, was Mick Foley in the previous interview? And he's like, well, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I just have too many of my favorite wrestlers in my life as friends. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. And speaking of wanchies and wrestlers and, and, and big time, I'm pretty proud. And I, part of me is like, maybe it's just us five listening. Okay, fine. Mike War. We we're talking about wanchies, trawl, yeah. and like mm-hmm. out, full Outer bank stuff. So like in the film, John Bernthal wears a wanchies trawl shirt. Yep. Which, as growing up my whole life, I didn't know that was a Tiger Woods thing. I just thought it was wanchies trawl. Did you know it was a Tiger Woods thing? No, I didn't. That's a TW. I Either way, what a, so yeah. but on the red carpet, I didn't wear shoes, and Mike was wearing a Wan Cheese Troll <laughs> shirt. Like we're full on, like we're this is yeah. our yeah, this is us. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite brand is Wan Cheese Troll. Mike's wearing a Wan Cheese Troll hat right now. If you're yeah. out there and you have and you have some Wan Cheese Troll gear, let's hook I, it up. I think, yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna get you boys outfitted before the weekend's yeah. over. Don't worry. Get us rigged up to say. <laughs> get us rigged up. I think I think I, I think I got some uh, some connections for you out there. I've, I've been working on it this morning yeah. since y'all came in here and I saw the hat. So, guys, I don't even know where to go from here, man. This has been an awesome having you guys in the studio with us this morning. Uh, I, I know I can probably speak for Autumn when I say it. Let's just speak for Autumn. Autumn, don't speak. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, Bateman. What was Autumn going to say? Autumn was going to say that if there's anything we You do... handsome son of a gun. Son of a gun. Now, go ahead. Well, she did say that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Talking, talking, yeah. yeah. She, she did say She goes, hey, you know. Yeah. Be on the I said, stream. I think that they age better than... Justin and um, Aaron Midget, because that's who we were talking to earlier. From yeah. We just drink water. Yeah. We just drink more water. Those yeah. guys, oh, wait, no, they drink water. It's Miller Lite. Though, <laughs> <or something>. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But and, uh, anything you all need from us, Thank you know, you. anything we can do to help, you know, promote this, push this. Yeah. I mean, I, I, well, I'll I, say it one more time if you don't mind me just, pit, just, just throwing it out there. We are in a thousand theaters across the nation. Please support us on Facebook, Instagram, any of those social media things. Tell and people it, it, about it. Does it have, like, an Instagram page and all that yep. stuff, too? Yep, at Peanut Butter Falcon. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, you know you know how to spell it. Um, uh, <laughs> and and also, the, the biggest thing is, is, in some ways, you know, the, the way the, the weekend goes in, in the nation, we can have an effect on. But the truth is, is this weekend, I'm here right now, and I'm coming I'm, I'm coming to Mania to do a Q&A tonight at 8 o'clock, uh, after the 8 o'clock showing. I'm going to be at the RC10 Theaters with Mike. Uh, there's a 715 showing that hasn't sold out yet. We're going to do a talk before that. that there's that a 930 time. showing that hasn't sold out yet for Friday and Saturday. There's a lot of show times. I'd put it, even if you go at the 4 o'clock ones here in Kill Double Hills, there's a 50-50 shot. We're going to walk in and just start talking at the end. We're, we really, we, yeah. like, this is our weekend. And by our weekend, I mean the Outer Banks. I mean, it's our time down here. Yeah, it's our time down here. It's their time up there. It's a Goonies quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's our time. I hear yeah. it. I love it. You guys were giving me, by the way, listeners, they were giving me a look. They're like, we don't know what you're talking about. No, no that's no, not I true. I have you. a Goonies yeah. cup. Autumn, we'll talk for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. We'll speak for you. Thanks, Tyler. Um, you got it. Uh, <laughs> little man explain this for you, Autumn. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, please come out. Please come to the theaters. I would love to see all your faces. I, I, you know, this is like a home, it's a big homecoming for me and a big homing coming for our film and I'd love to look out in the, the audience tonight and see like 260 friends in Manio yeah. and just feel that thing because I, I love I love 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 my hometown and I am so proud of it that I went and made art about it please come watch it see it it means a lot to us 
Yeah. Absolutely. And, and thank you for saying that, Autumn. I appreciate it. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> Mike, you got anything you want to add to all this? Thank you. I'm really, really glad to be here. And I think it's official now that I'm I'm sort of from the Outer Bank. Sort of. Sort yeah. of. Yeah. Sort of. Let's work, let's on it. Should, we should come up. We'll like do some adoption ceremony thing. Where I think we'll, so. Yeah, we'll figure like something out. Like the baptism out. scene. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Away. Maybe you can give it away. It's fine. We got some. We did a lot of spiritual undertones here. Some baptism I love it, man. scenes. Yeah, this is Dude, deep. That was great. It's deep. It's, deep. it's a deep thing. I was. It was this. Uh, that scene was, you know, a unique one to write. And for the people that haven't seen it, which is mostly everybody, you'll see tonight. But that scene was. You know, I wanted to represent sort of like Manios Southern Baptist in a way. I wanted to represent this like, oh brother, where art thou? Kind mm-hmm. of yeah, thing. man. Like there is some. There's this whole community. There's a. It's a funny community like that. There's like the Rock Church. There's all these different churches here in a really cool way. The Mormon Church. There's all these really great sets of people that are all in some ways maybe seeing the same thing from a different point of view. So we talk about that a lot in the film. You know, a little little Easter egg in the and for the movie is, you know, on the there, there's a part when somebody says to Saltwater Redneck, it's real hard to believe in something, and uh, there's this subtle stuff in there for anybody listening out there that's going to watch the film because I think believing in something is, can be really challenging, and I think that you know this is uh, we're living in times now that are um, I think it's nice to kind of grab onto your fellow man and be like, hey. I love you. It doesn't, right. you know, let's support each other. And you might be a little bit different than me and look a little bit different than me. And you might have Down syndrome. And you might be wearing a different hat or shirt or something that I don't like that represents something that isn't completely at my, and my core values. And, and, and also I can love you as a human being on a deeper level beyond the color of your hat or your shirt or your skin or, or your religious belief. And I think that's an important, there's a, there's certainly a nice undertone of that in the film. Feels good. Feels good uh, loving each other. Yes. Yeah. Feels so good feeling good again. Sorry, Thanks I'm just, talking, I'm just taking all me. your... No, no. I mean, Autumn, Man, thank you for saying that, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, this, this is your time. I want to do yeah. this. Yeah. is your time. Yeah. It's our time down here. Um, so, yeah. Come out this weekend in theaters. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, any closing thoughts from you? Come see the movie. Come yeah. see the movie. It's a special one. <laughs> all right. Peanut Butter Falcon is in May. No, it's a Peanut Butter Falcon. It's not the peanut butter falcon. falcon. The peanut butter falcon. It's the that peanut butter fiasco. Can't even write the down. peanut butter fiasco Autumn is in theaters. Right now. No, uh, we'll speak for Autumn. Okay. No, Autumn, please. No, I feel like Autumn should say something. No, okay. I don't want to say ahead, anything. Autumn. Nope, nothing. No, Autumn, please. Don't nope. make this up. We, we're not, we're not going to say anything until you say something. I don't have anything to say besides go see the movie. She just it. said it. She just yeah. said it. Peanut butter there falcon. You say it. Here's what I'll say about you, Autumn. You say it best when you say nothing else. <laughs> Hey, Keith oh Whitley. Oh, my God. <laughs> me back in 1999. Good Thanks Lord. Right. Thanks, Thanks for coming on in.